so this is the fabric I'm gonna be using this is like a thick cotton it's a little bit thicker than regular cotton it's almost like an upholstery strength so if you're using something lighter and thinner than this you might want to add lining or interfacing to uh, reinforce the strength especially if you're using it as a tote bag so that it's able to hold things like cans and jars. I want to make sure that I'm going to get the flower part. That's the graphic part. I want to have I want to have that saved so that it's visible in the bag. It is a little bit short. I would prefer to have this a little bit longer, but that's okay. I'm just going to have a small cute bag because I don't always need uh, extra large bags. Sometimes I just carry small stuff or make small trips. Because it's a little bit shorter on the width, I do want to have a little bit longer so then I can stack things upright. If I don't have the sides, I can use a different fabric and make a bigger bag and all that, but I just really like this. So I'm just going to make it taller and smaller width because that's what I have to work with today. have the width here is 12.5 and then the length is 18 inch I think yeah about that iron down where that line is and then I'm just gonna double it over like that. It's about 16 inches. I don't know if you can see there but it's 16. What I'm going to do because most people they do it where like you fold it in and then you fold it in. Um, I'm going to do it a little bit differently from some of the other tote bag tutorials you might have seen, so just stick with me if you want to see how this turns out. I'm going to mark off and cut out four pieces, and I'm going to make them 28 inches by 3 inches. So that's four pieces, 28 by 3 inch. So it's 0.25 from this end and then 0.25 inch from that end and I've marked it all the way across that's the part I'm gonna sew around and for now leave it open in the center in the middle part don't sew this part yet I picked out this white thread so that when I do any detailed stitching for my bag, then it's going to show in white. So I've turned the tube for the handles inside out, so you see this is what the strap is going to look like, and then I'm going to iron it down so it's flat like this, and let's see how long it is. So it's about 2.25 inches. 
and to turn this inside out, this strap is wide enough and this fabric is thick enough, I was able to just pull it through on its own. There is also like stick methods for pulling tubes through that other people use. Um, I just don't feel like watching all those tutorials right now or learning how to do that. I will at some point, but I just did it the old school way. If you're making a thinner strap, you'll probably need to use a stick method of some kind or a tube pulling through thing. But as you can see, I was able to just get it out through on its own. I've ironed these down so they're nice and flat. The easier way I found to do this, because this fabric is thick, is first I ironed it this way and then I ironed it this way so that I got all the creases out first. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold in these ends on each end. Let's say I'll fold it half an inch on the inside and then I'll iron that down as well. So I'm going to fold in half an inch on each end. So here I've pressed down all the four ends. When you're ironing it, you want to make sure that it stays flat and it doesn't pop out so it's like rounded. Next I'm going to sew down the ends. So you can see here I did all the ends of this strap. Using quarter inch seam, I'm going to go all the way down on both sides just to make it look neat and to stitch down the inside stuff. So I have these two straps now, they're both sewn with a quarter inch seam on all of the edges. Next, we're going to finally get to the bag part. The next thing I'm going to do is sew down the sides of the bag, so these ends. That's one side, and that's the other. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pin down the straps to the bag. I'm going to measure how long I want it from the end and mark that. So you want it wide enough so your hands and stuff can fit through it. So I've marked it 2.25 inches from the end and I used a pin to mark it and soap because it's washable and 3 inches from the top to the bottom. So it will be like this. You want to make sure you pin it down first and double check that the straps are even and they're sitting on your shoulder comfortably. And that's probably the hardest part of this whole process. So I pinned it down on both sides. I've tested it on my shoulders, walked around with it a little bit around the house. So I have a good idea that this is the right length and that it sits comfortably on my shoulder. You probably don't really need a strap wider than this because then it's just not gonna sit, um, like it's gonna start slipping off or something if you're making it too wide. But this is slightly longer than I would say like one of those IKEA bags. It's probably about 40% longer than that. So if you're having like shoulder pain and stuff from carrying a strappy bag, then that's what I would highly recommend using a thicker or longer wider strap. It doesn't have to be this big, but anything slightly bigger, it's gonna help carry the load on your shoulder so it's not digging into your shoulder and causing you pain. So I finished one X square thing. 
so you can see that's what it looks like I went over the edges here or where the ends of the strap is and then I just basically sewed over the same part where the original stitching was and you can see on the back side here that's what it looks like where I did the new stitches so I'm gonna do the rest now And then it's gonna go across this way. So I stitched down the straps on both sides. That's one side, that's the other side. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that the top is lined up here. The top edge here that's lined up. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin down the sides or you can clip them if you have clips. And then I'm going to stitch along on the outside, not on the inside, because we're going to turn it inside out and sew or stitch along the inside again. So just follow along here. I'm going to do again a quarter inch stitch going all the way down on both sides. So at the base here at the bottom, I've cut out two by two inch squares and now I can stitch along the sides. This is joined together but I will stitch it along the bottom just to help reinforce it. Also it's a quarter inch stitch that I'm going on these three sides and the bottom. So next thing we're going to do, you can see here, I did the quarter inch stitch there, here, and at the bottom. The next thing we're going to do is going to open this triangle. So I pressed it down with the iron just to help get this part a little bit more flat. And I'm just going to do a quarter inch stitch along each corner. So now that it's stitched along the sides, obviously we want to hide this these edges. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it inside out. So 
So now that it's turned inside out, I'm gonna press it down with the iron to make sure that it's perfectly flat. So I just ironed down the edges. I don't know if you can see here, but you can feel where that notch, where that ridge is gonna be. And you wanna make sure that you're stitching and you're covering over the whole area so that when you turn it inside out, you're not gonna see this edge. I do have to lead into it manually at this thick part because it's too um, delicate for my needle right now. And then we're gonna turn and do a curve here. I mean, if we're gonna go around, we might as well go all the way around, right? So, see here, I stitched along all of the edges, except this part, we'll get to that in a second. Let's turn it inside out to see if we missed any of the stitching. So see here, we just have one little loose thread, which is fine because that we can just snip off. Then this part, we're gonna sew it from the inside out again. And the rest of it looks okay. So you can tell here, you wanna double check that it's a clean edge so that you can go over it from the inside again if you need to touch up on any areas. Next, I'm gonna sew along the corner edge I folded this so it's in one direction, see here? So it's going the same direction on both sides just to make it easier so that this isn't twisted in the middle. And I am going to use the manual hand crank when I get to this part. what the inside looks like of course we can always add a pocket here I think I'm gonna skip this step for now I can always add it later I should have added it earlier if I really wanted to but I just wanted to show you the demo of how to make thick straps so you can see here it's still a little bit of loose thread just snip that off So I did iron it down, and this is what it looks like. And nice thick straps. I think it's a cute small bag if you don't want to carry too much stuff, but obviously if you're making a grocery bag, you want it to be a lot wider, so let's just say the base, like make it the size of a dozen eggs. 
but this is like, this could hold maybe like six eggs.